Hi, everyone. Welcome to Analyze Your Trade, episode number 21 for January 30th. Uh, tonight, we will be discussing your trade ideas. And over the last few days, people submitted up to five symbols each. Uh, and I have put together the list. And you should see it on, um, on your screen as I'm talking now. And uh, my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of Timing Research, and I developed the show with Dean Jenkins, Trades, and he is here to moderate tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. Okay, thanks, David. It's good to be here for show number 21. Um, looking forward to it. Uh, one of our panelists uh, apparently is having trouble logging in or something. So right now it is Oliver and I. So uh, the folks who are tuned in get to hear. Uh, from us. Oh, I think Roy has just joined us. So we'll see if uh, if he's able to get it going. Hey, thanks everybody who, who's here. Um, you prioritize this over the State of the Union address. I've got that recording, so uh, don't tell me anything. I'm going to go watch it afterwards and see what's going on. Uh, but uh, looking forward to this. We've got a good list of stocks to look at. And what we're going to do is, you know, the format here is we just go around the panel. We take a look at the stock. We try to get through as many as possible and just offer our opinion. Either it's you know thumbs up and how we would trade it, thumbs down, wouldn't touch it, or you know kind of neutral. But you know here's some ideas on it. And hopefully we're able to offer something that uh, the folks tuning in find valuable. Uh, before we get started, it's always good. Let's uh, go ahead and have the pa panel introduce themselves. And I don't know Roy if you're uh, uh, live yet. I haven't heard audio. You there? Can you hear me? Can you hear? There me? you go. Yep, yes, I hear you. Hi. Very good. Okay, we got a, your logo. So good. Glad you're here to contribute to the conversation. We'll start though with with Oliver. Oliver, you take if Oliver, if you would take a minute or two, sure. talk about you know yourself, your your trading approach, just you know what you got going on here. Sure. Uh, thanks for inviting me back to the show. I think it's my third time uh, uh, on here. Always appreciate uh, being invited back. So I'm Oliver Schmalholtz. Um, originally from uh, Bavaria in uh, Germany. I'm a serial entrepreneur, and um, uh, I developed a product called News Quantified uh, out of the, my own need. Uh, I couldn't find an off-the-shelf solution. I constantly saw news affecting my own portfolio, and I was mainly invested in uh, US equities, uh, but I was still living in uh, Europe, and I now live in Scottsdale, Arizona, and um, uh, I wanted a product that lets me better understand how uh, does news really affect uh, stocks and which are the events that drive uh, prices up and which are the events that drive prices down. And I did that manually uh, for two years uh, on a trade station uh, terminal uh, back in the mid uh, 2000s. And uh, there's so many news items out there every day. So I knew if I really want to do this right, I got to hire developer and take a systematic approach here, uh, then spent uh, $210,000 uh, buying uh, data. I had no idea if it would lead into anything. And uh, after crunching through all the data, I saw uh, patterns that repeat itself over and over and over that certain news events um, uh, keep producing the same uh, performance. And um, uh, then I uh, exclusively uh, traded it as a full-time uh, trader uh, for a number of years myself uh, before I started commercializing it. And uh, now um, I mainly like uh, holding overnight uh, positions. I don't have the time anymore to uh, day trade it, but it was uh, fun while I did it. And yeah, so what News Quantified does is we analyze between five and 10,000 news items a day on US equities, New York and NASDAQ. We don't do penny stocks and come out with uh, a list of uh, buy and sell signals and with a really deep uh, analysis. Uh, we have institutional clients using our service in the hedge fund market. And a couple of months ago, we uh, launched a retail product that puts it into a really nice uh, user interface, easy to understand, to be able to profit from news. So thanks a lot again, and look forward to uh, sharing a couple interesting things uh, tonight. Okay, great to have you here, Oliver. I am super interested in what you're doing there. I think it's powerful stuff. And I look forward to hearing your comments. Uh, Roy, if you'd take a moment to introduce yourself and what your approach is, what you got going on. 
Uh, sure, Roy Swanson. Uh, my website is Steady Trader. Um, basically, we uh, talk about active trading in the very short term. Uh, our mantra is uh, never hold a position for more than five days. Just on the on the idea that uh, you really can't predict. You know, as, as predictions get more and more long term, they just become less and less accurate. So uh, we develop a system to do. Uh, basically trades that last one to five days. The average is generally three days. Put the money in, take it out, collect your three, four, five percent on the, on the trade and move on. And, and, the, and again, and by, uh, it's a volume strategy. So by doing uh, 20 or 30 trades like that a month, you know, you get some decent returns. We're always doing two or three times the uh, market indices. And uh, All right. uh, uh, pretty simple trend. Uh, Trend analysis, we like to buy stocks that are moving up, keep it simple, but we use some indicators that aren't that commonly used. Um, we use the RMO, which is the Rahul Mohin, Mohindar Oscillator. I'm probably <laughs> savaging that, that his name. And we also use another one uh, called Pet D, uh, in addition to some of the more traditional uh, things like Wilder. All right, so you got a very short-term focus, less than five days. And uh, so we should probably have some, you know, a good uh, diversity of opinion here on uh, various instruments that we're going to look at tonight. So I'm Dean Jenkins, founder of FollowMeTrades.com. I've uh, been a trader for about 20 years. I've launched my service uh, uh, coming up on three years ago. I've been coaching folks for about five years before that, working with some other folks. Uh, but I'm, uh, I'm primarily a stock and option trader. Uh, I use a combination of Elliott Wave, very simple version of Elliott Wave, and uh, each mocha cloud, I call it East meets West. So I like the way they confirm each other when we're looking for an impulsive or corrective move. The each mocha cloud, I think, does a great job of confirming whether that really has broken through significant resistance or support and started the next direction. Um, I like to hold positions typically from four to six weeks uh, because I do believe that with powerful patterns and you know the Fibonacci levels and retracements and extensions that you can have an edge and predict uh, with reasonable probability where uh, the next move is going to go to. So I'm a little bit longer term, four to six weeks. I trade uh, most, I make all my analysis on the chart and then take the position with an option trade. And we've got a proprietary way of choosing the, the contracts to trade with. So you're probably gonna hear, you know, uh, uh, some, some healthy diversity in opinions, you know, short-term versus long-term versus news. And I think that's really cool for the, the folks who are tuned in. You get uh, several different perspectives. And we may not agree on everything, and that's okay. We can be disagreeable. We can be agreeable in disagreement. <laughs> we'll try not to be disagreeable, right? So we've got a good list here. A couple of them I've never heard of, and I'm looking forward to uh, – to taking a look at them. And the first one up is LAM Research, LRCX. I think we've looked at this before, but it's been a while, so I'm excited to see what's going on. And what we're going to do is go around the panel pretty quick here. So we'll start with Oliver, then Roy, then me. And if you want to share a chart or something, there's some controls here on the on the platform to do that. So Oliver, LAM Research. Uh, yeah, think? yeah. Uh, well, it's not looking good here. Um, we had the last earnings event uh, here uh, was on the 24th of January. Uh, they beat earnings. Um, and uh, uh, the consensus was 369. Uh, the actual EPS was 434. Uh, stock went down 9.24%, uh, uh, then confirmed um, uh, by a... Uh, Deutsche came out with a buy rating, uh, exactly the opposite reaction you typically see. Stock uh, goes down uh, 6%. Uh, typically, uh, you know, in Deutsche Bank upgrades uh, or reaffirms a uh, buy rating, uh, you see a positive impact. So definitely wouldn't uh, uh, go long uh, LAM uh, research uh, here. But at the same time, I wouldn't go short uh, either. So holding pattern. All right. Neutral. No, don't go long. Don't go short. Yeah. Sideline. Yep. Sideline. Roy, what do you think uh, on Lamb here? I uh, triggered nothing in my uh, <clears throat> with my indicators. I wouldn't touch it. 
Okay. I just you know. <laughs> and to the point. Okay, I think I got a chart up here of LAM Research, LRCX. And a couple things notable. Uh, this is what I call the semiconductor pattern. So if you were to pull up Micron, Applied Material, or 15 others, they look exactly the same, right? Big, huge run up last couple of years. <clears throat> Pretty big pullback in November, recovered from it, pulling back again. So it's in a period of fairly volatile consolidation. I think it's probably going to be correcting, but there's some real support that you'd have to bust through. You know, this previous low from November, you got the 200 SMA here, right? I got a Fibonacci correction zone, takes you down to about between 160, 120, somewhere in there. But by the time you break these support levels and for me to get a go signal on a trade, not much meat left on the bone. So I'm with Oliver and Roy, it's neutral. There's no good trade set up on LAM research for me. I definitely would not go long. And for me, it's too early to go short. And when the short signals are there, I don't know if there's enough left. That's my take on LAM. Uh, next up is NVIDIA. And this may be one of the ones that looks exactly same. Take the label off. Nope, it's a little different because it did go put in new highs. So Oliver, what do you think about uh, NVIDIA? Yeah, we actually had a very, very strong uh, buy signal uh, back here in uh, November, on November 9th, uh, here in the uh, after hours at 4.20. Uh, uh, we had a 6.5% uh, 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 on the event day. Since then, have gone uh, up 19.42%. Uh, so that popped up in, the, uh, in our uh, signals uh, scanner uh, here. Uh, I'd wait for the next uh, earnings event here. If we look at the um, uh, the last downgrade uh, here, just a slight 0.55% uh, uh, down uh, since then on the uh, uh, event day. Uh, let's see here. It actually... Uh, yeah, price. It actually went up 1.24%. Uh, so uh, I don't think it looks as possible for shorting uh, candidate uh, as uh, lamb uh, research here uh, yeah whoever took our last uh, buy signal uh, made some very very nice uh, profits in their account all right so it was a it was a buy it was a buy back not. in uh, november right now it's not a uh, sell yet and it's uh, uh, unless some other major earning uh, earnings happens uh, next earnings event is the next key time to uh, uh, we have a look at the stock. All right. What you got, Roy? Um, I've got a buy signal on this a couple of days ago, so I think I think it's uh, it's worth taking a look at. Um, the uh, wilder trend indicators are pretty good. The DX and the ADX3 are positive. Uh, my pet D triggered a couple of days ago, so uh, you know I like to see my buy signals today. This one's two days old, but I, I still think it's uh, it has some life in it. All right, heading up. Steady Trader likes it for a long. We do. Okay. Next up here is Apple. I got, I got some thoughts here on Apple. By golly. <laughs> yeah, that's that. Uh, 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 mm -hmm. Go ahead. You want to go first? Um, yeah, definitely. The uh, uh, I mean, all the news. If you look at, you know, how many. Uh, we had a lot of uh, news here uh, ever since the you know cut of the iPhone 10 uh, production uh, rumor uh, came out here. The volume wasn't uh, you know uh, if we look at it on a news item per news item uh, basis here, uh, all uh, pretty low uh, impact um, uh, from a volume uh, point of view compared to normalized uh, uh, levels here. But uh, yeah, next key earnings event, I think uh, it'll all be about uh, uh, what the forward-looking statement is uh, and if they change their strategy here on the next uh, iPhone, since that's the major contributor to, uh, to earnings. OK. Roy, Apple. Yeah, well, with our short-term perspective, um, 
we, we don't buy stocks that are going down and Apple's been going down for a few days. Um, plus there's just, uh, just don't have any recent buy signals on any of my indicators. So uh, again, we only look out for the next one to five days and uh, we don't see anything, any life there for us on a long, on a long position. Do you, do you trade the downside as well, Roy, or just long? Um, we, we tend to find enough, enough action in the upside to keep things simple. So mostly just long. Okay. Well, here's my thinking on Apple is uh, earnings are coming out on February 1st. And you know, there's no setup here for me for a longer term trade. But I think we're going to get some real volatility on, uh, on uh, earnings. And the play I like on this is a, an option strangle where you, know, you believe there's going to be a big move, but you have no idea what direction it's going to be. So tomorrow, I'm actually going to take a position in Apple. I got these purple lines. You know, strangle is where you take a uh, just out of the money put and a just out of the money call long, and you expect a big move. One of them goes into money. The price changes dramatically and proportionately more than the losing side, and the net result is that the trade's a win. So I'm going to fine tune my my uh, lines tomorrow as we see how Apple plays out right before, you know. Uh, the close tomorrow, and then I'm going to take my position and look for a big move as they announce earnings. So that's my, you know, is it going up? Is it going down? Flip a coin, man. Uh, you know, there is, you know, uh, iPhone 10 sales are weaker than expected, shutting down production, all this kind of stuff, but who knows, right? I, I don't try to guess, you know, how the market's going to respond to news. I like to trade the response and I think there's going to be a big response I just don't know what it'll be so I'm gonna be strangling some profit out of Apple and just in terms of that approach I did that I had that same expectation on Intel that I knew I didn't know uh, I I thought I thought there was a pretty good probability that there would be a, a big move on Intel on their earnings announcement I did not know which way so I did the same thing. I, you know, just out of the money long put, just out of the money long uh, call, and bam, a ten percent move, deep into the money, took a nice, nice profit on that. So that's how we play those. That's what uh, I'm looking for. Uh, what, on what was your break-even point uh, on that? How much uh, of a move did you uh, have to have uh, to get into positive territory? Not much. You know, on the on the Intel trade. Uh, one to two dollars would have got you slightly positive, and of course, it goes logarithmic from there. The the real break, you know, between the two uh, strike prices, very modest profit, and right at the center is a you know pocket change loss. As it breaks into the money on one side or the other, that's where the big profit is. Mm -hmm. Did did you check yet on Apple uh, how much of a uh, move uh, if you uh, got in today uh, you would have to see? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until late in the session tomorrow because implied volatility keeps moving around, and that's the key variable, right? So you got to get closer and closer to the event before you can really model it very well, I think. Right, and, and the higher uh, volatility today, uh, if it stays like that tomorrow, will make it more expensive. Yeah, yeah. So what we're looking for is to try and pick contracts and to get a, a big enough pop to take one side into the money. That's where you make money. But the... The loss on it, you know, one or two days out is, like I say, pocket change. It's, it's very minimal. So it's a pretty, you know, high, high, high reward to risk ratio on these, on these types of trades. So I like it. Um, cool. Got a little bit off track. Um, the next one, CHRW. I'm not even sure I've heard that before. I love looking at brand new stocks that I've never heard of. C.H. Robinson Worldwide, never heard of it. So what do you, uh, what do you got cooking there, Oliver? On uh, last earnings event on the 30th of January did not trigger uh, uh, anything. You can see here, you know, half a percent on the uh, uh, event day. Uh, S&P in the same time moved uh, down 0.02, uh, nothing. Uh, major here. If you look at the volume impact, uh, just 61% of normalized uh, volume. I mean, absolutely 
uh, nothing our system could uh, could find here. Okay. Probably not surprising, right? Because it, yeah, it was a company we haven't heard of, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah and the average, if you look at the average uh, uh, here, 43,000 uh, shares uh, after an earnings event, uh, that's, uh, uh, that is nothing. Uh, just 48 uh, uh, ticks, uh, 48 transactions. All right. And uh, Roy, got any thoughts here on uh, C.H. Robinson? Uh, yeah, I'm, it's not interesting to me. Uh, it, uh, I had a signal five days ago, but that's way too far out. And uh, the OBV turned negative, the unbalanced volume, meaning money's flowing out of it. Um, I... Just looking now, they had an earnings call uh, uh, today, and uh, they beat expectations, but they still went down in after hours trading. So, yeah, I'm just not seeing it. No interest. You know, from here. That, uh, that's the exact reason why I finally threw in the towel as a fundamental trader. That's how I started. You know, I went and got an MBA <laughs> and got all excited about analyzing companies. and did that for a long time through the dot-com thing and beyond. And it was such a, such a frustrating endeavor to, you know, spend all this time building a model and, and analyzing a company and, you know, uh, uh, you know, figuring all that out, trying to be, a, you know, basically a fundamental stock analyst. And, and to have, you know, good results come out, good solid company, good products, good management, good results, and the thing goes down because it wasn't good enough. Right. Um, it's the most frustrating thing in the world. And... That's what actually led me to uh, become a technical trader because I said, boy, it just looks like there's patterns. And there are patterns in the market, right? And, um, so, it, you know, the ultimate reality is, is how traders are responding to the information. I believe in part of the, um, uh, you know, perfect market theory, if you will, right? That, you know, current price reflects all known information, right? The efficient market theory. Um, the part of the efficient market theory that I don't believe with that says you can't predict, right? You can't beat the market, right? You, you can't have an edge. Um, but I do believe current price <laughs> reflects what the market participants think about all the current information. And I think they, they demonstrate a pattern from which you can derive uh, a probability and an edge and go trade on. That was a long way of getting to that point. Um, I, I don't like CHRW simply because it's, it's a it's a mature trend, right? I I loathe chasing trends. I like to get into them early. My entry was back here in October at about you know between 73, 75 bucks. I see a perfect setup there. Would have loved to ride that up if I'd have seen it, I'd have taken it. But it's way too late. Here we are, you know, just pulling back from 100 bucks. I'd be looking for trading to pull back, but it's too early for that. So way too late to go long. Way too early to go short for me on this trade don't like it yeah i'd agree with that and, and uh that was my observation on almost all of these is that they were what i would call stale trends i mean they they've been out there a little bit too long yeah but and, looking at the, the, whole, you know, the whole collection today was just kind of odd you know a whole uh we've been in a bull market for eight years and uh for the last year the bull market has gone parabolic, right? The the upward angle has changed. And so what a surprise. We're in mature trends on an awful lot of instruments, right? And I I, I personally don't have much interest in very, very mature trends because all I gotta do is go along to get the thing to turn, right? Turn down. So I'm I'm looking to catch new trends, new corrections, continuations of previous trends once they've corrected. And this is probably a good time because none of us have been like on fire for any of these trades yet, right? We've been through five, five symbols, four plus I threw in Intel. Um, so rather than be a bunch of wet rags, why don't we talk about trades we do like? So Oliver, what do you got right now that you are on fire about? What do you like? Uh, uh, yeah, if you look at uh, today's... Uh... Uh, today's news, uh, Maxim Integrated uh, uh, here went up 4.77% uh, uh, on a big uh, uh, down day. 
on uh, almost uh, double uh, uh, the volume. Uh, that looks uh, pretty good uh, to me. And then uh, let me just pull up uh, one other one here. Uh, Parsley uh, uh, Energy uh, uh, got crashed today. Uh, that popped up on our uh, scanner uh, this morning uh, before the open. Uh, there was, a uh, again, a analyst uh, downgrade. Uh, and, you know, um, when you see... Uh, a ten percent uh, move uh, when an analyst uh, uh, takes a uh, you know opinion here uh, that typically uh, lasts a couple uh, days. Uh, so that uh, that was a pretty strong uh, short signal here. Uh, Twenty nine point six million uh, uh, shares. Uh, that one was five times, almost six times uh, the usual volume in the same uh, time. 109,000 uh, ticks versus a five-day average of uh, 24,000 uh, and higher average number of uh, shares uh, uh, per trade. Uh, so that's the kind of metrics uh, our system looks at. There's a total of 100 different uh, uh, key points uh, we analyze, and it ultimately you know, uh, then uh, determines if it goes onto the uh, long or short list. So that's two examples of today. OK. Awesome. Those are pretty interesting. All right. Roy, I'm, I can't wait, man. What do you like right now? <laughs> I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I ran my scans today, and I got no buy signals. I got nothing for you. And uh, <laughs> it happens about every, uh, well, it happens two or three times a month, and this is one of the times it happened. I think it's because we have, we're having this micro correction the last couple of days. Uh, as, the, as the data is adjusting, but none of my indicators triggered on anything promising for the next. Not year. not surprising if you're a short term trader and we got a pullback going on, right? That's yeah, yeah, it, it happens. You're short term and you're primarily long, right? So we got a pullback. So that you know, um, no shame in that. And no. you know, one of the things one of the things I think most professional traders agree on. One of the things I certainly teach is sometimes the absolute best trade no trade oh yeah now we always say that you know we like to say our system keeps us out of trouble on the bad days and uh right now you know with now, a little pullback and there's a you know, market has I, a lot of use to it in, in many ways so um we'll just have to wait another day for a signal yeah i actually prefer trading short i know you you said you're primarily long for me the, yeah. the short trades are more exciting they move faster typically than you know that you know, it's the stairs going up and the elevator coming down, and we can make a lot of money on down markets. So, um, well, my favorite short trade right now is uh, TLT. It's the twenty-year, uh, uh, twenty-year plus Treasury bond ETF, and so this is kind of the essence of my analysis. You know, I've, I've said a few times I like to, I don't like to join mature trends. So we had this big move down through sixteen, seventeen was a correction up into a Fibonacci retracement zone. So from this big move down, the retracement zone is these blue lines over here. Price came up right into that retracement zone. And then we look for evidence, right? After the initial trend down, correction up, we look for evidence that the next move down is beginning. And we have it. We have lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, taking out previous lows. It's under the Ichimoku cloud. We've got negative momentum growing. And I can use Fibonacci extension lines to project based on the last impulsive wave, the correction, where's the extension going to go to? And the high probability zone is 113 to 104. And so we took this trade on uh, Monday at 122.41. We took a half size position in TLT because this is a bond fund. What's happening tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time? FOMC is going to come out and talk about potentially new rate cuts. Right, that could have a big effect on a bond fund. So we took a half position. Right, we think that we got a good technical setup here. Probably it's going to be likely this thing's going to continue down if rates go up. But we don't want to bet the farm on something that hasn't happened yet. So we took a half size position. If it goes our way, we'll scale in and manage risk appropriately. But I like the short on TLT. This could be a really really nice profitable trade. So there are good trades out there. By golly, I like them. I like this one a lot. And there's some good earning plays that we talked about before. 
Well, let's go ahead and get back to the list. Next up is, of course, Alibaba. Can't do a webinar without talking about Alibaba. It's like a semiconductor stock. What do you think, Oliver? Uh, let me uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah, everything showing up uh, currently as uh, low impact here. Uh, we had the last earnings in uh, November. Uh, stock went down uh, after a uh, beat, uh, so no strong uh, reaction there. Uh, uh, all the analyst uh, ratings uh, changes here. Uh, pretty much, uh, except that one from the 16th, uh, with a buy rating, stock went uh, down, so sidelines for me. All right, no interest in Alibaba. Not right now. Okay. And Roy already showed his cards that nothing came up in his filter, so Alibaba probably didn't come up in your filter, but uh, what do you think about it? No, no, I'm being generous on the ones I'm recommending. But uh, Alibaba, I mean, to your point, getting in late, it, it went up 10% last week, and now it's pulling back a little. I mean, the trend happened. It was last week. Not, you know, I'm not seeing the new one starting yet. So, yeah, it just didn't trigger any, any interest on my indicators. Yeah, the trend was last week, and it was last year. <laughs> right? <laughs> <clears throat> so probably nothing, nothing uh, there. Uh, that's my take on it. And again, it looks like a semiconductor stock, right? Big, big move up, parabolic move up, uh, pull back in November, went on to new highs. It's way too late to get long on this for me, way too early to try and short it. So I'm just on the side on only one. I did trade, by the way. I traded this move here, early 17 up. So that did hit my indicators. It did hit my screen. We did trade that move. And that was really good fun, right? But uh, not there anymore. Uh, next up is AMD. I got something to say about AMD. Yeah, uh, AMD, um, uh, last, er uh, last earnings uh, here, uh, actually today, uh, four or five. Um, and uh, stock right now sits at a 0.39% uh, uh, gain from... Uh, the uh, last price uh, before the news event, uh, so that was sitting at uh, twelve ninety. Now we're at twelve ninety five. Uh, we first went down uh, seven point ninety one percent. Maximum up was five point uh, oh four. Uh, there was some pretty big volume, twenty nine times uh, the regular uh, post session uh, uh, volume here. Uh, but the average shares per transactions are pretty much uh, exactly uh, uh, where they're normalized uh, levels here. So our system didn't uh, didn't trigger any any uh, buy here. Um, okay, uh, Roy. Uh, I had one indicator. Uh, give me a signal on this one. So I'll 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 say you know. Out of today's crop, that that's pretty good. Um, it's worth taking a look at for tomorrow. Okay. So I'm showing my chart here on AMD. I follow this one pretty closely. Um, it's a fun stock. It moves. You know, it moves pretty dramatically. It trades at high volume. And uh, I worked for Intel for a long time, about 15 years, and they were the arch enemy. So you know, I got to follow them. Um, but we we've, we've traded AMD lots of times and had fun. And um, in my trading room, we took this move up here. We caught this on a 60-minute chart, took that. We got out of it knowing we we're coming into earnings. And then you see my purple lines. I actually took a strangle on this coming into earnings. And I was pretty excited if we go to the 10-minute chart here and look at the after-hours action. As earnings came out, I was pretty excited when this thing dropped down, you know, under 12 bucks. I thought, here we go. But it kind of stabilized, came back up. So we'll see how it opens. They actually beat earnings by a penny. The expectation was uh, five cents. They got six. Um, but it wasn't totally a rosy story, right? Tough industry. Lots of things going on there. So we'll see how it opens tomorrow, whether our strangle, we just kind of close it quietly, um, or whether one of these directions uh, takes off. So fun stock to trade. Um, we'll see tomorrow. You know, I had no idea which way it's going, so that's why I did the strangle. 
just expecting volatility like we got in Intel. And we got it on the drop, but uh, then it kind of stabilized. So we'll see how it opens tomorrow and uh, make our moves then. KBA. What, what's KBA? It is a penny stock. Pink sheets. Uh, are you sure? It's trading at 37 bucks. Oh, really? Uh, uh, let me see here. David filters out pink sheet uh, symbols. It's a China company. Yeah, it's an uh, ETF, I think. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Oh yeah, yeah. We don't uh, we don't do ETFs, uh, so that's probably why uh, okay. they got to be something close on the pink sheets. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, so no opinion. Uh, we don't monitor ETFs. We only do actual uh, company news uh, and the relevant okay. uh, tickers. It looks like kind of low volume, so I'm not too excited about KBA. It's in a it's in an uptrend. Um, I'm jumping the I'm jumping my turn here, but sitting here looking at it. Um, it's in an uptrend, a little late, and it's, it's too thin. I don't trade things this thin myself. But, uh, Roy, I don't know what you got. Yeah, I got nothing on it. Just been to, and it's <clears throat> the ADX3 is down, the OBV is down. Uh, it's just nothing in for, you know, nothing for a near-term uh, long position on this for me. Okay. That one's a fizz. Bank of America. Hey, hey guys. List. Yeah, I was going to say that this would be a good opportunity. Uh, someone in the uh, live chat requested uh, BIDU. BIDU. So if you want to talk Baidu. about that one, Max. Sure, we'll talk about BIDU. Let's bring it up here. Do it on the fly. So I'll go first while everybody else takes a look, does their thing. Um, B-I-D-U, did you say? Yeah, uh, B-I-D-U, Baidu Inc. Oh, oh B-I-D, okay. So Baidu had a big impulsive move up, perfect correction, looked like it was going to extend up to a target zone. It's completely failed. It's broken down into the Ichimoku cloud. So probably on, I don't know if, it had, if they announced earnings or something, big drop today, 3.3%. Uh, kind of looks like this rally that was trying to go fell apart. And so I would wait and see what the new trend is. It's, you know, I wouldn't be going long on it, and it's a little early to try and short it for me. It's getting a little little messy, a little unclear for me on Baidu. So I don't, I'm neutral. I wouldn't trade it either way. Uh, Oliver. Yeah, we had a, a downgrade uh, yesterday at uh, Nomura. Uh, that drove uh, the stock uh, down a bit. Um, uh, that was yesterday. And then today there was some SoftBank. Uh, let's go into that here. SoftBank announced uh, some 175 billion AI fund uh, with some a uh, connection here uh, into uh, uh, Baidu uh, that drove the stock up 15 uh, cents. So nothing uh, major here. Uh, I would definitely uh, look for the next. Surprised uh, if the earnings isn't out yet. Uh, but if you look at the, the October earnings uh, here, uh, they beat earnings and stock goes down uh, seven point fifty nine percent with the uh, with the guidance uh, here. So that was um, the reaction there on five times uh, the regular volume. Uh, now we're just trading at ninety one percent. So uh, uh, the volume impact isn't uh, particularly uh, big. Um, uh, currently, they're just, they're just traders are looking for bad news, looking for a reason to sell. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's how. And, and then if you see the follow through, so one of the things, uh, you know, uh, with the news cycle is you have a triggering news event. And then um, if the mainstream media follows through, uh, uh, it almost, you know, it, it works in the perfect correlation. Once you see CNBC talking about it, it pops up on the Wall Street Journal uh, dot com, Bloomberg. And Yahoo Finance starts uh, putting it on their uh, site. Uh, there's a, uh, 
a beautiful correlation between how a news item is being followed up uh, by the major uh, uh, mainstream media and their investor portals. Uh, that's one of the things we monitor. We uh, look at the top 50 there, um, including you know Seeking Alpha. And uh, if you see an increase in volume there, uh, that typically correlates uh, both with volume and uh, price move. So on the other hand, if you don't see that, if there is a news item and uh, nobody else talks about it, uh, typically uh, it ends up in the 97% of the uh, news that are irrelevant and don't move uh, the market. OK. Do you guys use uh, Motley Fool as a source, or is that? Like yeah, a yeah, yeah. They're on the top fifty uh, list as well, uh, absolutely. And uh, so we looked at the top fifty uh, in regards to uh, web traffic, and that's how we uh, built the list. And um, that's about, I would say, forty percent of uh, the news. A little over the forty uh, percent, like forty-two percent uh, of the news items uh, we uh, analyze. So if typically it starts out, uh, you know, with an SEC filing or um, a disclosure through one of the news wires or a analyst uh, ratings uh, change or a rumor on, you know, Fly or Benzinga, and then you can see a uh, very nice follow through if it's a relevant item uh, on other properties, and if you don't see that, uh, it's irrelevant news, and you can uh, you can ignore it. That is super interesting. But, All right, but, thanks for jumping in, David. Are there were there any other uh, from the yeah, I got, a, I got I got a sell on that one. Oh, okay, Roy, right. I forgot. I, I, got two, I got two sell signals on uh, Baidu. So short it tomorrow if it goes below two forty. If you're into that kind of thing, but um, yeah. <laughs> All right, short below two forty, and I, I kind of see that that. Uh, Support area. If it breaks it, that might be a that might be a good short. Yeah. Uh, anything else coming in, David? Uh, uh, real time. Yeah. Let's go back to the the list. Yeah. All right. So next up is uh, Bank of America, BAC. Yeah, uh, BSC, the, uh, uh, let's see, her last earnings on the 17th, uh, up slightly uh, since then, uh, didn't trigger any uh, anything here in our uh, system. Um, so uh, sidelines uh, for now. Okay. Uh, Roy? Uh, yeah, I mean, the same here. This thing has been going up solid for a month. Uh, so, like, as you said earlier, we don't get into trends when they're that old. And, uh, in fact, it just, it's just bobbling a little bit. Uh, the order book's going down a little bit the last day or two. So, uh, <clears throat> we just we don't see any action on it for us. Yeah, so I'm showing my chart on Bank of America looking back about a year and a half, and it's a classic. Uh, Elliott wave sequence, right? There's three up, nice. It's a correction, a little bit of a shallow correction, but it did meet the criteria as a correction. And then solid proof of the next one beginning, there's a target zone, and there it is, price is in the target zone squarely. So once it hits the target zone, it's it's too mature. I'm not going to chase it. It could reverse at any time. Could continue, but that's a 50-50 that's a shot, and 50-50 is not... Uh, tradable edge for me I want more than that so beautiful trend um, I bought I bought Bank of America I had a blind luck before I'd really de developed a trading system at five dollars and took it to 12 and, and thought I was a genius and then was totally stressed out didn't know what to do uh, but that's a different different era <laughs> right um, different time uh, now we know how to manage trades I thought I'd throw that in. Now, next up is DVN. Never heard of that one that I know of. Let's see. And this is the kind of chart that I particularly, personally, loathe. But uh, Oliver, Devon Energy. Oh, yeah, we had, we had a pretty good, let's see how it matches with your uh, analysis here. We had a very strong cluster of buying signals here uh, the end of October and 1st of uh, November uh, uh, here. Um, 
nothing uh, since then, uh, but uh, pretty strong uh, buy signal uh, uh, here. Let's see. Here, actually, one year uh, right down here. Uh, got a pretty uh, yeah right down in the thirty six uh, area, thirty six uh, ninety, and has been steadily going up uh, since then. Just a small retracement uh, here, but then yeah, uh, probably waiting for the next uh, earnings event uh, here. Uh, let's see, going up soon. Do you, when's their next earnings? Do you have that on, on your page here? Uh, I'll have to go to the earnings calendar here. Let's see. DUEM. You got a pretty uh, 20th of uh, February. Yeah, we got a built-in earnings uh, calendar before the market. Uh, so we got we got a little less than three weeks, uh, or exactly three weeks uh, to go here. Um, and the conference call is at 11 o'clock. OK, very nice. Very nice. Well, we got, uh, all, kinds of, we got all kinds of stats here uh, you know, on the average. Uh, you know, beats and miss and uh, in inline. So it's a very easy to to see the health of uh, the market. That is really, really good, good stuff. I'm impressed with your database and your tools. Thanks, uh, Roy. I got a, I got a signal to a short or a sell it uh, two days ago, and based on what's happened in the last two days, it was probably a good signal. Um, yeah, moving Keep down. Those you might become, you might like a, you like might be a short trader, huh? Well, hey, I you know I get the signals. I just typically don't act on them. Just my preference, but right. there's plenty of signals. You see enough of those. <laughs> yeah. So the pattern I'm seeing here, I had to go back and look at more data, right? Get a bigger picture on it. Um, so the you know the the mega trend on 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 DVN is down. If you look, you know, back in 16, from 70 bucks down to 20, that's a down move. No argument on that. This move up was a retracement. It tried to start down again. That failed. So this is probably a new trend. And this is tough to uh, gauge. It, it's, a, it's a choppy, um, chaotic kind of thing without much order. And that's why I said it's the kind of chart I hate. Um, you know, when you zoom into current time, all you got is price swinging around without any kind of order um, or predictability, and you know, you hear me say it over and over. There's no edge, and you know, I want to, I want to be the, I want to be the house, right? The casino, you know, the house knows out of ten thousand roulette wheel spins, they got a, you know, fifty-seven point five percent edge. They're they're gonna win fifty-two point five. They're gonna win. 52.5% of the times, that's enough of an edge, right? I, I want to even be better than that. But when it's unknown, you know, you're just trading money back and forth and paying brokerage fees, and that's just not good enough. So nothing for me after that long riff on DVN. Last up here is Goldman Sachs. Sorts of all uh, government appointees, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, news follows through, as you can see here, is uh, low impact on on pretty much, uh, you know, if you go through the last SEC filings and through the analyst actions, uh, a little stronger on the news here, uh, down 2.1% uh, on the last um, uh, on the last earnings uh, here, but since then has gone in positive uh, territory. Uh, uh, so that's a good example here, you know, short uh, move down and then, you know, uh, moved up again. So it wasn't a strong uh, signal uh, when uh, the last earnings at around 7.30 in the morning were released on the 17th. Okay. And Roy? Uh, I say take it. <clears throat> I got a buy signal on it uh, one day ago, so uh, see how it does tomorrow. But um, 
this this could have some up, some upside for the next week. All right. And we agree on this one. Uh, it's it's in an uptrend. It's in a continuation of the original trend, and we got a price target above two eighty one on uh, Goldman. So there it goes. I mean, you can't bet Very against cool. Goldman in, until you can. <laughs> <laughs> they are the economy. Mm -hmm. We actually, one of my biggest wins, I think it was in 2015, 2015 was a, a short on Goldman's. But um, that was then. And and there will be more in the future. But for now, it's bullish, man. And there's a target up 281 to uh, 325, pretty wide zone. It's an uptrend, uninterrupted, continuation of an original, very powerful trend. Can't argue with it. So long on Goldman's. Well, hey, that's the list. That's a pretty good list. We made it through 10 symbols. We threw in a few extras for fun, some of our favorites. Yeah. So Guys, since we, have a few, since we have a few extra minutes here, do you want to do uh, GLD as well? Uh, yes. GLD? GLD. Yeah, GLD. And I'm going to – I'll lead off, let everybody else start. I'm going to show the daily gold futures contract. I think this – this shows better resolution than the ETF, which simply is a slave to the gold futures. So it's volatile. It is a volatile monster. And you can see uh, last year made a big run up, pretty deep retracement, came back up and just missed putting in a new high. So we got to see if it's going to reverse and continue. If it does, if it breaks through this previous high, there could be a really good trend in gold coming. And – uh, what the Fed says tomorrow may have a lot to do with this, but for now, you got to get through this level. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go long yet. I want to see it break, and uh, not really clear uh, short either. It's in an up move. It has not reversed. So gold's tough right now. It breaks this purple line at about 30, 1372 on the futures. You may have something going on, something much bigger. Uh, but it's got to do that. That's my take on uh, gold. Looks like Oliver's got some data. It's an ETF, not your thing, but... Uh, uh, no, ETFs aren't our thing, uh, so uh, no opinion. No opinion, okay. It's a wise man, right? It's not my thing, so I'm not going <laughs> to... No, we, we know what you're good at, and uh, it's not ETFs. All right. Very good. Uh, Roy, you guys do uh, ETFs? Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, stay away from this one. Um, <clears throat> everything looks negative, and in fact, the volume today was like about one sixth of normal. Uh, so I don't know what's going on. There, I think everybody's waiting on the nothing, nothing exciting on the for me. Yeah, possibly. As you said, yeah. too much volatility there, too much uncertainty. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that is going to take us to the end. And uh, what we'll do is go one more time around and just any closing thoughts. And if you got a link or a website you want to point people to for the for the panelists, now's your time. So, uh, Oliver, wrap it up from your perspective, sir, please. Uh, sure. Uh, if you don't utilize uh, the news flow in your uh, trading decisions, uh, I think you should really seriously uh, give it a uh, – Serious look. Uh, uh, there is a lot of uh, behavior that repeats itself over and over and uh, over. Um, it has made me great money in the last 10 years. Uh, the same setups, uh, the same signals that happened uh, 10 years ago when I first uh, started with this still work uh, uh, today uh, in a low volatility environment. Obviously, your profits aren't as high as if the markets are uh, moving more. Uh, but uh, it's a it's a great way to enhance existing strategies, or if you want a self -send sending strategy, um, uh, have a look at it. And there's a lot of free content on our site at newsquantified.com. Uh, we got daily uh, blog updates here. If you want to subscribe to that, uh, it's for free. 
uh, just put it in here uh, on the top right and you'll get an automatic uh, alert every day and we do uh, webinars uh, multiple times a month if you want to learn more would love to talk to you and uh, share the full story so thanks again for having me on the show um, Dean and David and um, uh, appreciate the invite hey it was great to be on with you again Oliver I think you got something cool going on um, I was a little creeped out by the the guy with the eyeball there on the table. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Roy, uh, any, any closing thoughts for you, sir? Yeah, just um, come come to our website, Study Trader, if you're interested in this kind of trading. Again, we, uh, we keep things very accountable. Uh, we're in and out within the week. We have a, an over 80% uh, accuracy rate, uh, and we just believe in taking lots of small steps, making lots of small gains, piling them up at the end of the month to get a decent return. Kind of low risk, uh, uh, the way we see it, kind of a low risk trading strategy. And I'll, I'll, give it, I'll, I'll give a nod to uh, Oliver and, and the last, although we are totally price action based with all the indicators we use, the last thing we do before we publish any signal is to look at the news of the day to see, because the news and, and media releases can, uh, you know, they push stocks around, they push prices around, and they can push the data around too. So um, I might have to, I might have to get with you, Oliver, offline. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's set up talk a call and uh, talk uh, how we can set you up with some access. If you give us source credit, uh, would love to, uh, you know, give you access to our stuff and uh, uh, provide you with some additional insights. Yeah, because you know that. We, we generally use the news as uh, something to stay away from. Like, all the indicators look good, but then if the news has got a big question mark, it's like, hmm, you know. There's well, always I, another I think, signal. There's always another signal. That's our right, way. We but I think if it, if it perfectly aligns and uh, your signal is saying the same thing as our signal, I think you'll have something very, very right. powerful that could take That's your accuracy rate even higher. Right. Corroboration is always good. Anyway. It's a fun good, show. Man. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, and you know, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I'm a technical trader. I make I make my decisions uh, on price action on the chart, but I do the same thing. I go scan, right? So I go, yeah, I really like this trade. I got a good setup. I got all my parameters met. Now, is there any disruptive events known coming, right? A drug announcement or earnings or exactly. merger, you know, back, uh, chapter 11. Right, it just, it just feels stupid to take a trade and then find out that they were planning to file for bankruptcy, right? And, right. And that, someone, dropped, and that was someone, no dropped, information. someone dropped a lawsuit on them and after hours. Yeah, you know, you know, at least you know that stuff can happen and it can surprise you. But if, if there's public information about it's coming, you feel stupid if you took the trade and didn't know, right? Right. Um, so try to avoid that for sure. Um, so uh, again, I'm Dean Jenkins. Follow me trades. Uh, this is my website here, and uh, you know we post. I, I believe in transparency. We, you know we don't have any um, yachts and bikini gals and private jets. We're just talking about consistent, solid gains year on year, and um, we post the details of every single trade that we take. Um, we got nothing to hide, and you know we're not claiming that every trade wins but we're claiming that we are consistently profitable over time and we're confident enough we have third-party validation. Uh, every quarter I turn my brokerage statements over to a CPA firm and they perform an audit and check what I put on the website and then they check my account and see if I really did do what I said I was doing and, and of course I am. So uh, great way to, for people that are interested to dip their toe in the water is to sign up for our free newsletter. It's called Beyond the Noise. Uh, comes out every week, market analysis and some ideas about uh, the overall indexes, gold and oil, major markets. So that's a great way to get introduced. And uh, I think that's a wrap. Thanks so much. Uh, it was fun being here with both of you, Oliver and Roy. And David, thanks for hosting, pulling it all together. And I'll send it back to you, my brother. All right, guys. Uh, great show. Just want to remind everyone watching, be sure to hit the YouTube subscribe button if you haven't yet to get updates on future shows. Also, uh, Crowd Forecast News and Analyze Your Trade will be back next week.
Forecast News will be February 5th, Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and the next episode of this show, Analyze Your Trade, will be February 6th, uh, Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time, so be sure to join us for that. You can always go to timingresearch.com slash live to get the uh, access to the live shows. And I uh, just want to thank my guests again for this week, uh, Oliver Schmalholz of newsquantified.com of steadytrader.com and dean jenkins of followmetrades.com thanks guys thanks a lot thank you